welcome back to my channel Mostly Paper Crafts and in today's video I'm so excited because I've convinced my fiance Jared to join me and to do some gel plate printing. Now, this is a super fun technique, it's easy for anyone and that's actually what I wanted to show in this video. Jared doesn't do much art at all and I knew this is something that he would be able to do and enjoy and be successful with and as I explain it to him, I can record the video and show you how it's done too. So Jared is gonna be joining us for some gel plate printing. So this is my handsome fiance, Jared. Jared, are you excited to do some art? Absolutely. We just got our work surface set up here. So we put down some paper to protect the table. This is the paint that I just got on Prime Day. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but I think it was like $12 for 30 different colors of paints. We've got some stencils, a little bit of bubble wrap. Got our rollers, some paper. This is just copy paper that's been cut in half. And then here is the gel plate. I also filled a tub with some soapy water. So when we're done with the stencils, we can just throw them in there. We just took out the jelly plate and Jared's never done this before so I'm excited to show him how it works. I have two separate brayers. We'll use one for rolling the paint and then one just to smooth the paper out on top of it so that we get a nice clean print. Jared just picked two colors. He picked sun's colors. So Jared go ahead and just put a couple spots of paint onto the jelly plate. So you're just gonna squeeze out a little bit. They're not open yet. No, they're brand new. <laughs> and just squeeze out some paint. Okay. Okay, cool. Now you're gonna take one of the brayers, um, let's use this one for the paint. And um, you can really roll these either way you want, but probably not roll them into each other yet. So if you wanna start with one color and then just kind of roll it around. Mm -hmm. And you can like roll it all over the plate. Awesome. And then when you're ready, you can roll the orange and you can kind of roll them together or try to keep them separate. It's totally up to you. Just smooshing the paint around. And when you're happy with what that looks like, um, you're just gonna take one of these sheets of paper, put it down over top. And then you can push down on this with your hand or we can use the other brayer, but don't use the one that's covered in paint. Cool, and then you're just gonna peel it up off of there. So this is Jared's first jelly print. Cool, all right, and we're gonna set that to the side to dry and we're gonna work on a couple more. So go ahead and take another piece of paper and do the same thing. Put it on that print, rub it around. You can use your fingers, you can use the clean brayer, however you wanna do it. So this is the basic technique for just getting paint onto the paper using the plate, uh, but we'll be using stencils in just a couple of minutes. There's gonna be a lot less paint on this one. There's a lot of paint still left on the brayer, so Jared, go ahead and put the paint onto the jelly plate. Look at that. And then go ahead and push down another sheet of paper when you're happy with that. Cool, I like that one the best so far. What do you think? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so let's roll one more time the paint off of that brayer and then let's use a stencil. Well, let's use this brick one. So just set that down. It doesn't have to be straight. It could be however you like it. Uh, this stencil is one that I made on my scan and cut. Go ahead and put the paper on it. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna rub. This time I've definitely used your fingers so that you can kind of get into the little nooks and crannies of the stencil. And we're gonna be doing two prints with this. One is with the stencil on there. 
So go ahead and pull it when you're ready. Nice, okay, and now you're gonna pull the stencil off and then you're gonna do another print. Um, let's put it to the side, we'll use that one again. Same piece of paper? Nope, new sheet of paper. And then this time you're gonna get the paint that was left. Yes, you're doing a great job. When you're doing jelly printing, you wanna have a bunch of paper available because I'm, we're gonna be doing a bunch of different sheets and we're gonna layer these up. So we're gonna do a bunch of different prints on each one. These are looking really good so far. All right, we're gonna add some black. So Jared's putting some paint on the plate. He's gonna roll it out. And we're gonna add this to one of the prints that doesn't have much going on on it yet. And this time he's gonna use after he smooths it around with the Brayer, he's gonna use a foam brush just to sponge off some of that paint and make an interesting texture. Nice. Nice. Jared, are you having fun so far? Totally. <laughs> so fun. I just put this on there. Yep. And then you can use your hand or the clean brayer, whichever you prefer. So we're adding some black to this was I think the first print, maybe this was the second one. Okay. Let's see what we got here. You never know what you're gonna get when you're printing. All right, all right. Looks good. And um, it looks like there's still some more paint on the plate there. Do you wanna add that to maybe that orange one over there? Yeah, we'll just add that directly on there. So this pool isn't gonna bring much paint off of the jelly plate, but it's gonna get some. And it's gonna add that next layer on the print. That looks cool. Nice, awesome. We're gonna add some more brick pattern to some of these original prints. a little bit more paint, just brayering it around. I'm really excited that Jared is doing this with me today. We don't, we don't do much art together. I really like the stencil. It's working well with the, with the printing. Great. All right, and then we'll pull the stencil, and then we're, we'll print what's left on the plate onto this one that's half purple, half orange. print the paper I think was just a little bit too wet and it stuck to the plate so now we have this which is pretty cool but we'll wash this plate off um, and start again this time we're gonna add a layer of white and there's just adding some texture with a fork just doing whatever do you feel like an artist almost <laughs> okay and then just pick whichever print you want to put it on Smush it down. That's cool. Yeah, that turned out neat. Awesome. I think we should add some light to that one over there. Well, both of them, I guess.
Nice. All right. This time we're going to use a little bit of bubble wrap to add texture. So he's putting more purple on to this print because this one doesn't have much purple yet. And the background a little bit. Oh, I think you put it on the wrong side. That's okay. We'll just make sure that it gets into the trash before we get paint everywhere. Okay, go ahead and print it and see what happens. It's subtle. I like that though. There's like more purple than there was before. Right, so bubbles down this time. We're going to try this technique again. Okay. black hearts. Nice. All right, and then um, let's see what's left. Do you want to put that onto one of these? These are all pretty dark already. Maybe let's do it on a clean sheet. I think this one's gonna come out really neat. It's just, um, it's distressed. It's okay. <laughs> awesome. We've got three different colors here and we're just going to roll them up and down. That looks cool. That looks cool just like that. All right. Um, what do you think? Maybe this one doesn't have much going on yet. Um, do you want to put the rest on this one? Sure. So the second print is called the ghost print, where you've already pulled up most of the paint, but there's still some left. Makes for a more subtle effect. And if you haven't done jelly plate printing before, you'll notice that there is ink that's left every time on the gel plate. You could wash that off in between if you want, but if you leave it, then it just ends up showing up at some point as texture on another print. We're gonna do another print using those same colors. This time we're gonna use a stencil. We're gonna do the circles right over these hearts on the bricks. So this one has a lot of layers. Oops. 
you want to do your best to push into all the little holes on the stencil so you get as much paint as possible. And you can run over it with the bird too if you want. Okay, and then this is gonna leave a really cool print. I really wanna put it on. Check out those cool little circles. I think this is my favorite one so far. These are all pretty wet. The paint that I'm using, well, the paint that Jared's using is a little bit on the thin side, so it's just taking a little bit of time to dry. This is what we have right now. We are gonna come back to this in a couple of minutes and add, I think, one more layer to most of these. We took a quick break for lunch and had things dry i actually went through it and i made a set jared was having all the fun so i knew i needed to get in on the printing action and what we're doing now is we're doing one more layer on his with white but we're not using the new paint that i bought from amazon we're using my good acrylic paint we're using delusions because the white in the uh, cheap pack of paints that I got really doesn't cover. So these paints are, are okay, but they're really not good for layering. So, all right, awesome. And then let's figure out one to put this on. So we're just gonna do one more layer with the white on his prints and I'll show you what it looks like. So we spent a little bit more time and these are Jared's final prints. He said he was happy with these so we decided we're not going to add any more layers. And these are going to get cut down into a rectangle so that they can be used on cards and bookmarks. And I always think it's so interesting to see what the print looks like and then to see it in its final form because once you chop off the unwanted parts, I mean it really does turn it into a piece of art. Not that it's not art already, but it still has the messy components. So these are Jared's, these turned out awesome. And I did some of my own. I did, like I said, pull out my good acrylic paint. I pulled out my delusions at the end. So I did um, the white and the sunshine and the bubblegum pink because the other paints really weren't layering well and um, and I wanted these to, to look good at the end. So you can see I chose brighter colors to work with but the techniques were all the same. And of course you can do other techniques on your gel plate too. I just wanted to keep it very basic for today. Mostly we were just rolling paint and using stencils and then doing prints and ghost prints we were taking the print through the stencil and then the print that was left um, after the stencil. But I'm really happy with how these came out and I know that I'll be able to turn them into some awesome projects. I took a few minutes to trim these down and they're not trimmed down to their final size because I don't know exactly what project they're gonna be used on, if they're gonna be on cards or bookmarks. But this is a really great thing to do with a partner. Maybe you wanna do some art with them but they don't feel super creative. But these can easily be turned into personalized cards for family members or bookmarks, even easier. You know, Jared has a big family. Um, awesome sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, his parents are great. And wouldn't it be so fun for him to give cards that have these great backgrounds that he designed himself. So something to consider if you're trying to get your partner or maybe just a friend that isn't um, excited about doing art with you, gel plate printing is a pretty good entry point into the world of um, mixed media, paper crafting, card making, whatever you wanna do. 
because we can use these backgrounds on anything. These could go into a scrapbook easily as well. So like I said, these are not cut down to their final size because I don't know what project they'll be needed for, but I just trimmed off the edges and this is what we we're left with. And I'm very happy with the prints that Jared and I made. So we just finished all of our printing and I wanna know, Jared, how you felt about it? Was it easy? Do you feel like someone who doesn't paint very often could be successful with a technique like this? Yeah, it was uh, fairly easy and uh, it's a good way to get into painting if you've never done it before. Awesome, and you did a great job, Jared. Okay. <laughs> I was so proud of Jared's work today and he was hesitant to do this because like I said he doesn't do much art he doesn't feel very creative but anyone could do this technique it's really fun um, your basic supplies are just your printing plate and a brayer or two and then beyond that you just need paint and paper but you can use stencils you can use anything that'll give it texture including your fingers we used a fork but you can use things like combs to comb out some of the paint anything that'll put a design into it you can even use your stamps so rubber stamps or your clear stamps anything that'll move or remove any of the paint is going to make a cool design if you like this video and would like to see more gel plate techniques, just let me know in the comments below. And until next time, go make something beautiful.